But God wants to mold a man to play the noblest part. But he yearns with all his heart to create so great and mold a man that all the world shall be amazed. Watch his methods. Watch his ways. How he ruthlessly perfects whom he royally elects. How he hammers him and hurts him and with mighty blows converts him into trial shapes of clay which only God understands. While his tortured heart is crying and he, and he lifts beseeching hands. How he bends but never breaks when his good he undertakes. How he uses whom he chooses and with every purpose fuses him with every act induces him to try his splendor out. God knows what he's about. It's from that last line I draw the title for this mini-series over the season of the year, this year and into, into the next year. God knows what he's about when he blesses. And we'll consider that in three messages. God keeps his promises, that's today. God uh, chooses his servants, that's next week. We'll look a little closer at Mary and Joseph, carefully selected servants. And third, God sends his son, which is an appropriate statement to be used on Christmas morning. The first two Sundays of the new year, we'll flip it over to the other side. And we'll look at the crushings in the lives of two individuals that Christians are somewhat familiar with. The fourth message will be God bends a stubborn will. We'll look at Jonah of Joppa and how God bent his will to walk ultimately in obedience. And then the final of the series will be God humbles a proud heart. God not only bends a stubborn will, he humbles a proud heart and we'll look at Saul of Tarsus. The uh, earlier years of his life, when he was anything but a model of godliness. That will be our plan for the coming holiday season. To begin with, God keeps his promises. We look at three of them that are among the better known of those that God has promised. Someone once numbered all the promises in the Bible. And he, he said in the particular article he wrote, there are 7,474 promises. I chose not to read them today, knowing that you wanted to have lunch and supper. So I would address all of those, but only three that stand out. But by the way, not all the promises are for us to claim. Remember that. That there are there are certain promises written to certain in certain individuals that have nothing to do with us, but they're promises. And then there are those that are directly related to us in our lives. Those are promises we can claim for ourselves. The, the three I'm looking at today have to do, of course, with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. What makes it interesting is that all three were written in 700 B.C. Think of that. Seven centuries before Christ was even on the earth, God had made statements regarding Jesus that were a long time away from their being fulfilled. In fact, the first one in Isaiah 7, verse 14, has a double fulfillment. Interestingly, all three of these promises were fulfilled during the days the Bible was being written, which gives us assurance that if God kept his word back when the scriptures were being written, he certainly does the same today, in case you question his promises. 
But in this first case, where we read the Lord himself will give you a sign, Isaiah 7, 14, the virgin will conceive a child and, and she will give birth to a son and will call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. That's got a double fulfillment. Maybe you have found that out in your study of the scriptures. First in the days of Isaiah, who lived around the era of 700 B.C. And uh, Isaiah is speaking these words to a king named Ahaz. Isaiah says to him, well, he's going to give you a sign and you will know that it is the Lord. A, a virgin will, will have a child. Now in this case, the word virgin, Alma in the Hebrew means uh, a woman of marriageable age. It doesn't necessarily refer to one who conceives while a virgin, as it does in the case of Mary. We'll look at that in a moment. But this has reference to one who was at that time, Isaiah wrote this and spoke this, she was a virgin. She would later be married and would have a son, but at this time, the Lord makes this promise to Ahaz that he can count on it, that the Lord will bring about a child from this woman who, as of now, is not even married, nor, nor has ever known a man intimately. Interestingly, this one would be the wife of Isaiah himself. After he lost his first wife, he marries again, and that second wife would give birth to a child. When it was written, she was a virgin. But when it was fulfilled, of course, she had known Isaiah intimately, and they saw their firstborn come into their home. Now, I want you to go to the second fulfillment, and that's found over in Matthew chapter 1. Turn there, please. Well, I'm here at work. We'll uh, this passage next time as we consider that God chooses his servants. And I have in mind both Joseph and Mary. That's what I'm listening to is Insight for Living at 720, 36 degrees, and uh, so much for that. Well, I hope everybody's doing good. I pray for all my friends, uh, Jean, Colin, Renee for financial success, Kevin, Tyler, and Tia for their safety, and Kevin while he's out running around in Chicago uh, doing his work. She and uh, the power pray for the Holy Lana, Joseph and I pray for Samantha, and I pray for Grandma that everybody is doing good and everybody is healthy. And uh, I pray so for speech, and I want to say uh, a special word for a special person, and that's Ephatha. So you all know who you are. So in Jesus' name, I pray this. So everybody have a great day. Amen. Later, usually a full year, you would be married. But during the engagement, bye bye. It was not simply.